Brother Anthony Roberts, greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you've been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on, on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. A pleasant good morning, a pleasant good day to everyone in this island, in this great nation, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth, on the World Wide Web, we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a joy and a privilege for us to enter into your homes, and wherever you are, it's a privilege, it's an honor, and we thank God for this opportunity, and we thank God and thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to listen to this broadcast and to listen to the Word of God. Before we open the Word of God, we shall seek the Lord's face in prayer. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, hallowed be thy name. We approach thee this day in the name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank thee for this opportunity thou hast afforded us to open the Word of God and to speak to men, women, boys, and girls about that one who is crowned with glory and with honor, whose wonderful name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We look to thee again and we pray for thy help, help from the very throne above, that as thy word goes forth, it will be accompanied with power from on high, that those who are not saved will be convicted and be converted. Thy beloved people be built up in our most holy faith. If there are those who are backslidden, they'll be restored unto thee. And above all, the wonderful name of thyself be honored, praised, and glorified. Father, we think of those who are not well, and we pray especially for them, that I will raise them up and restore to a measure of good health and strength. These things we ask with our thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, I would like us to turn, please, to the prophecy of Jeremiah. The prophecy of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 8, and we shall read the last verse, which is verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse number 22. The word of God says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Shall we read that verse again, please? Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? We trust and we know that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts and help us in declaring same for Christ's sake. Amen. Today, I would like us to consider as our subject, as our topic, a disturbing situation. A disturbing situation. What is this situation that is so disturbing? Notice the questions that have been asked. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? There, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? A disturbing situation. As we look at these questions, as we look at this verse before us, there are a few things I would like us to consider. And as we consider these truths, we trust that God will bless what it is for his glory, he will bless it to our hearts and that he will search the hearts of those who are not saved that they will come to our knowledge of the truth and be his and his forever. The first thing we shall consider is the situation. The situation, the condition, the state, the surrounding and location of the place. 
what was taking place in Gilead? What was the situation? When one reads, when one looks again at the word of God, at the verse from which we have read, the situation was there was illness. There was illness. There was sickness. Unhealthy condition of the body. The body was sick. The body was ill. There was illness. Notice that this illness was actual. Actual, it existed in fact. It was present, it was current, it was real. It was not something imaginary, it was actual. There was illness in Gilead. There was sickness. And friends, we want you to observe as we look at the sickness that existed, that disturbed many, we want you to observe and understand that there is a sickness in this island. There is a sickness in this great nation. There is a sickness throughout the world. And this sickness is not sickness of the body. We are talking about the sickness of sin. S-I-N, sin. It's a sickness. It's an illness. It's a disease. And we want you to observe that it is very, very disturbing. It is also actual. It is not imaginary. It is a fact that every person in this island, every person in this nation is sick, spiritually sick. Everyone who is viewing this broadcast, every person on the face of this earth is a sinner. The Bible makes it clear. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the question is, the disturbing situation was and is, there was illness and this illness was actual. It is a fact that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it was actual. Not only was the illness actual, but God wants us to know that the illness was active. It was working. It was operating. It was operating. It was not static. It was moving. It was working. It was operating. And it is operating internally. And it was operating externally. And God is saying to every person in this island, everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth today, Wherever you are, God is saying that this sickness called sin is not only actual, is not only real, but God is saying to us that it is working, it is active, it is operating inside, and it is operating on the outside. When one listens, when one views, when one sees and hears the things that people do and say in this nation, in this country, in this world these things tell us that sin is working sin is working it is active in the lives of men and women boys and girls so the Bible tells us that God wants us to know that this illness was actual this illness was uh, illness was active it was working working internally working externally and it we don't have to go far to see the operation of sin. The illness was not only actual, it was not only active, but God wants us to know it was acute. It was critical, it was serious. It was not something with which you can laugh, about which you can laugh. It is not something that will cause you to giggle. It's not something that will amuse you. The thing was acute, it was serious. Dear friends, viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth, sin is something serious. Do not take it lightly. It is acute. 
If you play and trifle with sin, sin is going to take you to hell and the lake of fire. Friends, the disturbing situation was there was illness. The illness was acute. The illness was serious. You have a disease that is serious. And we would to God that you're going to recognize how serious it is and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The illness was acute. The illness was alarming. The illness was disturbing. A disturbing situation. It was disturbing. Is there no balm in Gilead? A disturbing situation. Friends, it was alarming. And when one considers the, the question of sin, it's alarming. It's disturbing. And we would to God that it will disturb you to the fact. It will disturb you so much that you will not rest until you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. It was alarming. This illness was appalling. It was terrifying. It was very bad. It was displeasing, terrifying. It caused terror. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? A disturbing situation. Oh, friends, we want to tell you that the question of sin and the disease of sin is appalling. It is terrifying. Don't trifle with it. Don't play with it. The Bible tells us then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Very disturbing. Very appalling. The illness was addressed. Thank God. You had to speak about it. And there was someone who spoke about it. It had to be declared. People got to know how serious sin is. And we thank God for every servant of God who trumpets, who heralds the sweet message of the gospel and tells men and women, boys and girls in Tobago, in this nation, throughout the world, that there is a way back unto God from the dark paths of sin, that we thank God that Jesus Christ is still the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Although this illness was appalling and although sin is appalling, although sin is acute, although sin is serious, we are here to tell you that Jesus and Jesus only has the cure, has the remedy for sin. We trust that today, before this broadcast comes to a close, that you will open wide your heart of sin, repent of your sin, and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. It was addressed. Thank God for the person, for the prophet, and for those who averred this sweet message and letting them know that God is ready and able as the physician to heal, to cleanse, to save to the utmost everyone who comes unto him. And that is why the gospel is so wonderful. That is why the gospel is so sweet. It not only tells us about our illness, but it tells us that God has provided salvation in the person of his son. And the gospel tells us how that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried. He is risen from the dead. And the Bible tells us, neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Oh, we thank God for this marvelous truth and for the gospel. The illness was addressed. Not only was their illness the disturbing situation, but I would like us to consider there was inability. There was inability. The lack of power and the lack of means. There was no power. Power, inability existed, and that is what sin does. That is what the illness did. It did not only cause them, as it were, the people were they were in an in a in an, in a situation where they were in an inability. They were unable. They were not able to do anything. In other words, they were helpless. The inability surfaced. The inability was real. The inability was there. And friends, viewing this broadcast, moments with truth, 
God is saying that sin, there is inability, there is no power, there is no means as far as man is concerned. Notice what the inability did. The inability brought hardship because when the question is asked, is there no balm in Gilead? No balm, no physician. The inability was real. The inability was present. And God says that inability brought hardship. Sin always brings hardship. Sin brings hardship to individuals. Sin bring, brings hardship to families. Sin brings hardship to villages. Sin brings hardship to the country. Sin brings hardship to the world. And the problem we have on the earth today is because of sin and the hardship that sin has brought. The inability that is present, it brings hardship. This did not only bring hardship. The inability brought hurt. It brought injury. Sin always brings injury. Sin hurts. And friends don't play with it because it's going to hurt you. And when sin hurts you, no man can help you. The only one who has the power to help you and save you is Jesus. And we would to God that you are going to come to him and be saved. The inability brought hardship. The inability brought hurt. The inability brought horror. It brought terror. It brought fear. And that is what the disease of sin does. It brings horror to families, to individuals. But notice it brought humiliation. It brought them low. And that is what sin does. Sin takes you from where you are and brings you. Sin descends you and it brings you low. It brings you lower and it takes you down. It takes you down. And if you don't repent of your sin, it's going to take you to hell and the lake of fire. The inability humiliates. Friends, don't trifle with sin. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is, no, is there no physician there? The inability. It also brought helplessness. They could not help themselves. And the situation in which we are because of sin, we cannot help ourselves. There is no human being who can help us in the condition because all are in the same condition. There is no angel. No angel can help us in that situation. The disturbing situation, Michael, Gabriel, neither of those angels has the power to save, to keep, and to satisfy. The only one who can help us is the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you come to him this morning? Will you come to him today? Will you trust him as your savior? Will you come and seek the Lord? Come believe in him. Come believe in him. Come to Jesus. Look and live. Secondly, not only the situation, but secondly, look at the shame. The situation brought embarrassment. The situation was insulting. It brought shame. The shame was evident. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The, the embarrassment that was brought, it was evident. It was real. It was obvious. It was plain. It was clear. And that is what sin does. Sin shames us. Sin brings shame to the human family. We trust this morning, we trust today, that you will not trifle with it, but that you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. God says the shame was evident. Is there no balm in Gilead? It was experienced, it was felt, it was realized. The experience was there because there, there was no means, no capability. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there someone who can help us in this situation? No human being could have helped us because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It was experienced as a result of no method. Nobody would have come up with a plan, with a method, with a cure because all were in the same condition. There was no mankind. You look around the human family and there was no one who could help us in the disturbing circumstance and in the disturbing situation, no man could have helped us. That is why the songwriter says, no angel could our place have taken highest 
of the high, though he nailed to the cross, despised, forsaken, was one of the Godhead three, who saved us from eternal loss, who but God's son upon the cross. What did he do? He died for thee. Where is he now? Believe it thou in heaven interceding. No mankind, as far as human being, is concerned. There was no manual, no book, no document, but we thank God today that there is a document, there is a manual called the Bible, the Holy Bible, that tells us that although there is shame, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is revealed in the Holy Word of God, the Bible, the inspired inerrant word of God. But we wanted to observe that the shame, there was no medicine. There was no medicine. No balm. There was not a balm. There was not any medication for the people who were ill in Gilead. Is there no balm in Gilead? In this country, is there any balm? Is there any medication? Is there any medicine? We thank God that although men have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that there is medicine, there is the physician, and his sweet name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, look at the solution. Look at the cure. Look at the remedy. Look at the answer. Is there no physician? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The solution is in God. He is the great physician. And friends, Jesus Christ is still the great physician. And so this medication, this, this situation in which we are, thank God that there is a solution. And the solution is a person. Notice, is there no physician? The physician is a person, and this physician is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our great physician now is here, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to chair. Oh, hear the word of Jesus. Sweetest name in seraph song, sweetest note on mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus Blessed Jesus. He is the great physician. God came into this world. God became man and tabernacled among us. And not only did he tabernacle among men, but this person is pure. Never sinned. The medicine is pure. The Lord Jesus Christ is pure. Never sinned. Could not have sinned. And thank God, having lived perfectly, he went to Calvary, suffered, bled, and died so that every human being in this island, in this nation, on this earth, can be saved by the grace of God. Friends this morning, friends today, the solution is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The physician, he is a person. The physician is pure. The physician is perfect. Never sinned and could not have sinned. We want to tell you the solution is perfect. The solution is present. Right where you are, you can be healed. Right where you are, you can be saved. Right where you are, your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from your sin. Or you may say, well, what do I have to do? Well, all God is saying to you is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Or you might say, well, you don't know anything about me and we don't know anything about you. What we do know is that all of us have sinned, but Jesus Christ is the, is, the, is the way. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the door. Jesus Christ is ready and able to save you. And if you open your hearts, repent of your sin, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, will cleanse you from your sin right here and now. So we want to tell you that the solution is present. The solution is permanent. Is there no balm in Gilead? The solution is permanent. And if you repent of your sin, the Lord is going to save you and save you forever. And it's going to be praiseworthy. You lift your hearts before God and give him the honor, the praise, and the glory. A disturbing situation. But thank God for the cure, for the remedy that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one 
who has the power to save you from sin. We are going to close this broadcast in a word of prayer. And while we are praying, you can bow your heads with us. You can bow your heart with us and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. He will save you and he will save you now. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we come to thee at the close of another broadcast, Moments with Truth. And Father, we have looked briefly at the disturbing situation. There was illness. Oh God, everyone on this earth have, has sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But although we are in that awful condition, Father, this morning we thank thee that there is a way back unto God from the dark parts of sin. Jesus is the solution. Oh God, speak to every heart in this great nation throughout the world that they will recognize that Jesus is the great physician and from their hearts they will repent of their sin and trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. Bless thy word. Say precious souls as we give thee our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Holy Savior, sanctified forever, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life.